Last week was the start of something special in the life of our church family. The importance of work because the plan ain't going our way. The natural stuff and God's trying to get you to understand we got a whole bunch of stuff over here. God got one sheet. Free now and then you gotta, this is my seat. Break it up. That's my ministry. Break it up. Well, why are you doing it like that? We used to doing it. Break it up. Today, we dive just a little deeper as it relates to building a strong foundation. If we're going to continue to advance the kingdom of God through the leadership of Pastor Ray, it will truly take a total team effort, and we all need to stand on firm foundation. I'm Sheree Lee, Children's Ministry Director, and I'm here to get my instructions as we're reminded that we're truly building something worth keeping. Let's go and let's grow. Luke 43, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. I got some help today, and uh, God has been preparing me. I hadn't preached for about two months, and man, God just kept giving me divine downloads of what he wanted to say in the future, and um, this building, we're in a new series, we're in this series, uh, this is week two of the series entitled, all right, let's start that all over again real quick, because I don't know what that was, that was this. That was the little church over there, but this is the big valley. That was the little valley, but we're going to try it again, all right? Give me some dab. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're in week two of a series that God started last week entitled? Building Something Worth Keeping. Valley, I love y'all. So today, week two, we're going to be dealing with standing on firm foundation. Woo, somebody say woo. Woo. I like y'all. Standing on firm foundation, as we go into Luke uh, 6 and 43, Jesus was trying to let some people know some, that some new things were on the horizon. You know, you had the Pharisees, the Sadducees. <laughs> they were sad, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Jokers, they were locked into what they thought it should be and what the way that they thought it should roll. And Jesus was trying to show them, I am the way. They were rejecting it and here in Luke. Jesus was had his people, and he was trying to get people to understand this whole new concept. And before we get to that scripture, Theodore Roosevelt, which is our 26th president, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I'm right, uh, he, he, uh, he was in office from 1901, I believe, to 1909, and he suggests this particular, uh, this particular word. This is uh, one of his sayings. Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. That's a, that's a word to process right there. I ain't going to say no names, but some folk don't like to come to rehearsals. <laughs> some folk don't like to come to practice. You know, remember Alan Iverson, practice. We talking about practice. Oh, man. It takes work to, get, to be up here and do what they do. It takes effort, and it takes a little pain to be able to get up and do what they do. And he says this, he says, I've never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I've never envied those type of people. How many people in the room, you've envied someone who led an easy life? But he did say this, I have envied or admired a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. And I want to suggest to you today that based on what uh, President Roosevelt said, that I believe the reason why they led their lives well is because they had a firm foundation. Now, let's just talk about last week. Last week, let's just rewind for a second. A faulty foundation, faulty foundation is when it is no longer able to support the full weight of what is being built due to movement of soil and excessive settlement. In other words, there's been a double anointing. There's been a double portion, and folk can't handle the double portion. So what ends up happening is you lose friends in this season of double anointing. And, it, and, and just, just, say, just say to yourself, it's okay. it's okay. Those friends could only get me so far. I don't even get mad at them. I thank them. Let me help you all out. So years ago, I was signed to a record company by the name of Gospel Centric Records, Okay. And Gospel Centric did wonderful by me. But after my first release, and singers hear me on this, Diamond, you need to hear this. 
because it's not about a record deal. It's about what God is trying to do in your life, and he'll use whatever he needs to use to, to get you where he needs to get you. But it came a season where they had to let go of people because they were not making money on the record label. So I was on a label with Jay Moss, Kurt Franklin, Dorinda Clark Cole, a Trinity 5-7, and then Ray Beatty. Who you think they letting go first? <laughs> Are they letting go the Rose of Gospel? Dorinda? No. Are they working, letting go of Kurt Franklin? Absolutely not. <laughs> Trinity 5-7? No. God's grace was upon them. <laughs> So I was the first artist that they let go. You know what I did? I sent them a letter and thanked them for the time that I had with them. Because guess what? In that season where I was doing concerts and I was promoting records, Windsor Village saw me. And I did a concert for Windsor Village, then they asked me to come back. And then they asked me to come back again, and then they asked me would I be their youth pastor. All things work together. You can't despise small. You can't be mad when stuff don't go. Where I was growing, I was no longer in need of that relationship. In other words, the relationship took its course. It did what God wanted it to do, and it was time for me to move on. And if you're on faulty foundation, you'll start to get mad with people. Ooh, preach. So today we're going to be reminded what it means to be faithful. Everybody say faithful. Faithful. Confident. Confident. Kingdom citizens. That's who we are, who stand on solid ground. Let's go. Let's grow. Here we go. 43rd verse says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. You need to ask yourself, am I a good fruit? Well, on Sundays I'm a good fruit, but you catch me during the week. I don't know. (laughs) That's what some people say. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are never not picked from brable bushes. 45th verse says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. Where your heart lies, that's where, that's where your treasure is, where your, where your heart is. And we're going to get to that. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say then flows from what is in your heart. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't even do what I say? 47th verse, he says, I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to me, to my teaching, and then actually follows it. 48th verse, he says, it is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. Somebody say solid rock. When, that's a key word. See, when we learn in preaching, there are some words that are key in sentences. It does not say if. It did not say maybe the floods. When. One thing I love about God, he never let me know, even in these songs, nobody told me that the road would be easy. The word don't even say it. It's not just a song. The word says, when the flood waters rise, and not only will they rise, Pastor Jeff, they'll break against that house. In other words, your house is going to take a hit every now and then. We still in the business of saying, it's not going to happen. It's not, but what happens when it does? What kind of ground are you standing on? And then the Bible says right here, my, that house, that particular house that the God, that Jesus and Christ himself is talking about, It stands firm because it is well built. Look at somebody and point to them and say, you are well built. Look on the other side, say, you are well built. Say, you are well built. Hallelujah. Firm foundation. Somebody just holler one more time. Firm foundation. So I got some guys up here that are helping me today. I'm going to tell you who they are, but I want to show you this video first. Um, and it deals with firm foundation. I've started this new thing where I'm in the gym because we have our own gym, and I want to utilize my gifts to be able to uh, invite people to Christ. And uh, this is one of the things that we do before service every week, before worship experience every week. So check this video out real quick. The 
Love this church family. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. Our yeah. scripture focus every morning will be, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, this is the scripture that we'll use as we're building something worth keeping. And this will be something like my ritual. Every morning you'll see me do this. Hit or miss in life. Life will present some hits and misses. But your responsibility is to bless the Lord at all times. Hit or miss. Let's go. Hit or miss, I still will bless the Lord at all times. We'll see you this morning, 10 a.m., right. Valley Worship Experience. Let's go. Let's grow. All right, so, so Deacon, Deacon Anderson, let me tell you what happened after that. All right, so, so the guy, that our social media guy, Jamel, um, bless his heart, the first thing he said, Shalon, we was walking out, we was walking out the gym. He said, uh, Pastor Bay, this is your first week as the leader. Uh, and Darius and Marley were right there with me. They said, Elder Cowley, do you, want to, you think you want to do that over? <laughs> Tab, he said, you, you, you missed, you know, you know, do you want? I say, see, you, you gave me more sermon material. <laughs> Isn't it funny that all we want to show? <laughs> Let me talk to you, Q. All we want to show is our hits. We want to see our mates. We want to see the makeup done well. We want to see the outfit put together well. We don't want to see the times where we slip and fall where there's some mess ups. But the Bible didn't say I will bless the Lord when I do good and when I, the Bible says I will bless the Lord. And I need to know if I got about four or five all time praises in the room that no matter what's going on in your life, I will bless the Lord at, be, and in order to do that, in order to do that, Joyce, you got to be standing on the right foundation because guess what? Sit down, y'all, sit down. My flesh crept up. Now, that's just the baller in me because I still play. I can still do it. All of you, I, I got that Jordan walk still. I, I still can do it. And, and that flesh, Lamont, rolled up in me. And, and when he said it, I was like, yeah, man, my flesh Wanted to go back and shoot that because I know I can hit. I, I hit it 50 million times. But my spirit man said that would not be standing on the truth. And see, every now and then you got to make sure your spirit man is somewhere where your flesh can be subject to your spirit. See, some of us, our spirits ain't, ain't, ain't in the right place. And our flesh ends up making the decision because our flesh got rule over our spirit, man. But baby, when you start getting in that word and you start speaking to God and you start having some prayer time. Now look at this. What moved my spirit, man? Guess what? My flesh ain't went nowhere. Some of y'all thought when you got saved, my flesh is going to move. Your flesh still going to like what it like and going to do and going to want to do what it wanted to do before you got saved. But the more you read, the more you spend time with God, the more you build your prayer life, the more you spend. Now your flesh has to be subject to your spirit. And even when your flesh wants to, your spirit says, sit down somewhere. Somebody say, sit down, flesh. Sit down, y'all. That was just the introduction. <laughs> So you got to put that flesh under subjection. How I many know that thing be hard sometimes? That thing be hard sometimes. That's why you got to come to these classes that we're offering to strengthen you in your foundation, not in yourself, but in the Word of God. So here Jesus speaking to his disciples, he's speaking to everyone, and he's talking about obeying God as you see them building this They've started to build, and they got this cement. Thank you, Brother Rob. Thank you, Brother B, Vincent. And they are building this foundation. And I talked to them this weekend, and as I was reading the scripture, it says, Obeying God is like a house on strong foundation that literally stands firm when again. Not if, not maybe, when storms come. And as I was talking to Rob, and I was talking, shout out to Charles, who's with his family, and I was talking to them this week, and they have experienced 
and building foundation. So I asked them, I said, what are the three keys to building firm foundation? He said, first of all, you got to know the definition of foundation. The definition of foundation is it's the lowest load-bearing part of a building. In other words, it's what we stand on. So they said, Pastor Bay, the first thing, this is, this is Rob, you know, and Rob is, if you know, anybody know Rob, he's, when, he, when he knows something, I'm just learning him, but I can just tell when he knows something, he just, you know, he knows it. He, 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 he was the pastor to me this week. He was the pastor of cement this week. <laughs> he said, Pastor Bay, the first thing you got, you know, his voice gets real deep and very, Pastor Bay, the first thing you need to, you need to do, Pastor Bay, you need to make sure that the foundation is level. Oh, this is so good to me. Say, so you got to make sure the foundation is level and it's not unstable ground. Mm. Oh, my Lord. And here in chapter, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 6, Jesus himself compares someone who listens and obeys as a person that's building on firm foundation. Uh, uh, I looked up Proverbs 3 and 5. It said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Do not lean. <laughs> and the Lord gave me this. He says, as long as you trust in me and, you, and you're allowing your foundation to be level, what I say is going to be good. You, and you can put anything on me because if it stands for truth, then I, but some of your stuff ain't standing for truth and you lean to your own way. And every time you lean to your own way, you wonder why stuff is falling. It's because your building is leaning. You've leaned to your own understanding. You've acknowledged your own way. And you can't, when you trust in God, you can't lean to the right. You can't lean to the left. You got to let that thing be level. Oh, my God. And some of us have the, the problem with the 21st century believer. We start to lean towards everybody else but God. Soon as somebody says something, we lean towards them. Well, maybe that is true, we, or we try to lean. Now, let me say this. Let me pause parenthetically, as they say as preachers, and let me say this. I am not against any preacher in America because we all preach Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a famous preacher that preached this week, and he talked about tithing and offering. And let me tell you something. Most of the stuff he was talking about was great stuff. Let me just say that right now. But I got to establish some foundation in this house so you'll understand how we move. Number one. One, I am not against any other pastor, number one. But I want to let you know we are not a church that forces you to give. We've never been a church that forces you to give. We will never browbeat you for what you ain't done in Jesus' name. Come on. We ain't going to giving be number, number two. Giving is an act of worship. Amen. Giving, listen. And we ain't talking about nobody else because we, we got some brilliant preachers can, that can breach circles around me. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about today. Giving, though, and, and tithing is an act of worship. It's a response for who God has been to you. If he's worth anything to you, giving is a sign of your worth, of his worth to you. If he ain't worth nothing to you, don't give nothing to him. And let me say this. If he ain't worth nothing to you on a consistent basis... Tithing is a principle of consistency. It's a base. It's a start. Now, let me say this. If you want to give more than 10%, baby, listen here. We welcome you to give more than 10%. We'll be ecstatic about it. You can give 15. You can give 20, 25. You can give 50%. You can give what? But whatever you give, it has to come from your heart. Everybody say level foundation. It's a heart issue. Each man should give according to what's in his heart. But if he's worth anything to you, your heart going to line up with him. And then this is the last thing. He loves a what? I ain't giving it grudgingly. We don't ever want you to give like, dang, I got to give this to God. Man, he ain't receiving that the right way. You want to come up here and say, you know what? This is the last I got. God, you're going to make a way. You've had, you've made a way. I look at your PPP. You have a past performance portfolio to let me know that you've always came through. You will always come through. And the last thing I'll give you as it relates to tithes and all, you can call it what you want. You can play on game, play on words and all that. But... A hundred percent of what we have comes from the Lord. Ain't none of it ours. Everything that we have, all these things 
come from thee, O Lord, and what I give back to you is a little bit of what you gave me. But in order to receive that, I have to be playing on level ground. Number, number two, they said make sure the ground is level. But number three, number, number two, they said you got to strengthen your foundation. And we're living in a time where the world, the, the church, some of the church, I'm not going to say all because I haven't been to all churches, but some of the churches are biblically illiterate. And, and, and what's happening is we need to strengthen. They told me in order, look at this beautiful, and if y'all saw this, this was a mess, but he's smoothing this thing out. But there's one thing that this foundation needs that y'all didn't see that was in there, and it's called rebar. Woo, this rebar, all right? And I said, I said to Brother Rob, I said, is that tongue? So, what he bar? How about me? an idiot. Sound like a tongue. He said, no, Pastor Beatty, go, <laughs> go, go look the word up. I looked the word up, and it says rebar is known as reinforcing steel or reinforcement steel. And these steel bars are used as tension devices and, reinstall, and reinforcement concrete to strengthen and aid the concrete under tension. <laughs> steel bars used as tension. Some of y'all ain't catching this. Tension devices and reinforced concrete to strengthen the concrete, to aid the concrete that is under tension. Some of y'all still ain't caught it. These steel bars help the concrete. <laughs> this steel bar is called the rebar. The rebar. <laughs> And what it does is it helps the device to, to, have to reinforce concrete to strengthen and to aid. To strengthen and to aid. Deacon Anderson, Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost, what's the Holy Ghost? What's the, what's the assignment of the Holy He's the helper. He's the sustainer. I want to call him the rebar praise. Give him, give him a rebar praise. He sustains you. He helps you. He makes sure everything stays together. That's the importance of having the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And could it be that some of us, the reason why we're having the trouble that we have is because we don't have Holy Spirit. And let me tell you about Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit is gentleman. All this stuff that we saw throughout the year, come out in the gym. Hold my shot. People walk up to you, how you doing? Jesus. You scared me. <laughs> I don't want your Jesus. <laughs> it's a scary Jesus. <laughs> when I found out, y'all, young people, when I found out, Tasha, that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is not spooky, he's not scary, he's a comforter. And he's a guide. And he's not pushy. I learned the most valuable lesson I can learn in life. And that's why I pray a prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. Because he's the helper to release all control to you. Because some days I want to do things on my own. But his ways are made perfect. Come on. His ways are perfect. My perfect are not my ways. Perfect are his ways. So I have to give 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 control over to Holy Spirit. And the last thing, after I've allowed rebar to set into the concrete, then I got to give it time to cure. Now, Isaac, this is what we don't like, even in the church. We don't like to just sit here and wait. Feel like we got to be doing something. We got to be moving. I can't even hold my hands on my side. I just got to do something. Remember how you tell you, I tell Kyra all the time, why you got to move? It's fun to move. <laughs> and for us, it's fun for us to move because we feel like we're doing something. But you got to understand there's a season called rest. After you've done what you're supposed to do, you got to let rebar. <laughs> <laughs>
You got to let Holy Spirit have his way because some things in your life need time and doesn't need your voice. Because you know what we do? We, this is what we do. This is what we do, y'all. This is what we do. We've, we've put the, we poured the concrete, and we got the concrete, all right? And we got the rebar in there. But after it's finished, this is what we do. Girl, I got the concrete in there. I got the rebar in there. And I don't know how long it's going to take. But I'm just waiting on this concrete and this rebar. Hold on. Yeah, I'm talking to Susie about this concrete and rebar. Let me call you back because I need to tell you about this rebar, girl. This rebar is wearing me out. Yeah, girl, that was Johnny. I was telling him about this rebar too. Can you get Ann on? Because I need to tell all y'all about this rebar. And we spend a lot of time talking when we should be spending time with Holy Spirit, just being still. So I speak still over this church family. That you will have, you, matter of fact, you are made in the image of God. You have everything that you need. When God made you in his image and in his likeness, Genesis 1 and 26 says, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion. Everything you need has already been done. So I speak done over your life. I speak done over your careers. I speak done over your finances. I speak done over relationships in your life that it's already done. And that all he needs you to do in these times where the foundation is being built and the rebar is being set in is to wait, I say, on the Lord. And not just wait, Pastor Jeff, but be of good cheer. So not waiting, worrying. Because we can wait and just be like, and we can keep checking on it. And some people, remember mama used to make them cakes in the oven? And we'd be like, when is it ready? Like, and, and mama wasn't worried. <laughs> mama, boy, my, mama was a mess. She didn't look back one time. She started doing other things because her timing was impeccable. She knew when that was going to be ready. We need to get to the point where we understand what God has done in the past lets us know what he's capable of in the future. So we got to trust him even we, we can't trace him. I, trace him means I don't know how you're doing this. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to trust you. So some people say, Pastor Beatty, and I, I think I'm going to close right here, man. Thank you for, for getting on. Pastor Beatty, I've been waiting. I, I've been standing firm. I've been standing firm, Pastor Beatty. I've been firm. And I've been waiting. I've been standing. I've been, doing, I've, I've been doing exactly that that you said I should be doing. I've been doing it. But, Pastor Beatty, I've been being overlooked. They see everybody else. They don't see me. Man, and I, I've been waving at them. I've been waving my hands in the air <laughs> and waving like I just really care. I, I, want, them to, <laughs> I want them to see me. But God told me to tell about a hundred of y'all, you were not overlooked, you were hidden. You were not overlooked, you were simply hidden. And Deacon Anderson, let me bag it up with Bible. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide Come on, dancers, give me, a, under, give me a shadow. Come on, give me something. Give me something that can be under me. Come on, come on, bring it, bring it. Bring one of them sheets that y'all always dance. Bring one of them things. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide where? You were not overlooked. You were hidden. Woo! Come on, nothing. Come on, come on, come on, hold it. Hold, 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 hold it. Hold it, hold, hold. Under the shadow. And you thought... <laughs> As a matter of fact, y'all just take these two and put them together. Because why? Because I'm under a double anointing. Well, well Pastor Baby be thinking quick, don't he? That's that double anointing. You were thinking that they couldn't see you. They were not supposed to see you. Because God was hiding you. 
Because if where you were standing, you were able to be seen, then you attach yourself to the wrong thing. And the wrong thing could bring the wrong glory. Oh, help me preaching here. And because you were standing in a place, it wasn't firm foundation. You were, what, oh, help me God. What you were holding, you didn't have enough room to stand. So God said, I can't give you what I really want to give you because if I give it to you, where you're standing is not firm ground. So God will, God will wait <laughs> until you move on some firm foundation. You wonder, you think people walk around talking about some, man, how did Ray Beatty get the valley? <laughs> Because Ray Beatty was never standing on unfirm foundation. Ray Beatty was like David somewhere minding his own business. And because God could trust Ray Beatty, he could shift Ray Beatty. But in order for him to shift Ray Beatty, Ray Beatty had to be standing on firm foundation. Ray Beatty was never looking to be senior pastor. Ray Beatty's never looking to be apostle. Ray Beatty's never looking to be a bishop. I'm looking to be available. I just want to speak to the available people today that you say I'm a Lord here's my hands Lord here's my heart my will is your will my way is your way whether they ever call your name don't matter matters if you're standing on firm foundation not standing on the foundation of what people say and what God was looking to do through you he could not afford for it to cave in because the assignment that God has for your life is going to bless others lives <laughs> so the reality is he saved you from a lot of drama he kept you from danger seeing. So the rest of this year, I, prof I speak prophetically because I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I speak prophetically. The rest of this year will be the year of surprise. Ray Beatty, the senior pastor of Valley, I never saw that. I'm glad that you wasn't my firm foundation. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm glad I was standing on God's solid foundation. And I, I decree and declare in this place that God will surprise you as you stand firm on level ground. You hook up with Holy Spirit. Wait, I say, on the Lord and allow him to renew your strength. The rest of your year be the year of surprise. Give God a praise for that word. So, as we close, we get ready for harvest. Why would someone build a house without a foundation? Let me, let me just give you a few. Perhaps to save time, avoid hard work, Possibly because the scenery somewhere else is better. <laughs> More attractive. Beach houses. <laughs> Perhaps because they want to join their friends. Oh my God, we're going to talk about that next week. Who have already settled on stony ground. <laughs> because they have discounted the reports because they don't think disaster can happen to them. Whatever the reason, those with no foundation are short-sighted and sooner or later will be sorry. God, obeying God, I continue to say, is like building a house on strong foundation. Luke 48 says it plain. When the, when the flood waters rise, and we're going to have some flood waters, we just came out of a storm. Let me tell you, there are three types of people. There's people that have been in a storm, are going through a storm 
<laughs> or coming out of one. How many of y'all been in a storm? How many of y'all right now, honestly, you got a storm going on right now? But then, can I get a witness that there are some people that have come out of a pandemic storm? And this is the key. When life is calm, foundation doesn't matter. Don't matter. I can go up and down these stairs. Don't. I can go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But sooner or later, something may happen where a cord comes and I get stuck in this cord. Oh, the first thing I do is grip to make sure I got my footing. God is saying, life is going to hit. But when it does, just make sure you reach for the solid rock. Don't reach for your friends. Don't reach for social media. It's so easy to go vent. Somebody will take this sermon today and say, he said something bad about so-and-so, so-and-so pastor. No, I didn't. I honor the man of God who's blessed me for years. That pastor about time. I honor him. I'm just telling you about this house. I'm speaking about what we do at this house. When the offertory moment comes, we don't buy. Matter of fact, we thank you for what you give because it helps us continue to build the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I'm letting you know how we roll because God has been consistent in my life. My tithe is a consistent gift to God. Shalon, write out a 500. I want to write God a $500 offering today. I want to just be a blessing to God today. I just thought about what he's done in my life. I just thought about where I come from. And I just want to sow a seed to him. And I know this one thing, Elder Callie, you cannot beat God. Yeah. And it ain't just money. Diamond, come here. It's a young lady that I've just had the pleasure of meeting. She's the sweet, one of the sweetest persons I know. This young lady drives nearly from Evanston to come to rehearsal. Woo! <laughs> she says, that, I say, why you come from Evanston? You done passed up 50 churches. Why you coming from Evanston to come? She said, because Shekinah Glory for years deposited so much in me and blessed me. This is my seed. So not only am I sowing into the valley $500, I want to sow into you $500. You didn't ask me. I didn't even know I was going to do it. She got to check the account. You better pray. But you are good ground, firm foundation. And because of the seeds you sown, I decree and declare eyes have not seen ears have not heard all of the good things he has for a diamond said the Lord firm somebody say firm foundation Come on. glory to God I'm not just building on foundation I'm building on firm and for those people that think we rich we ain't rich we just rich in Jesus I don't have a lot, but I do have a lot <laughs> because my father is rich <laughs> and I just know how to sow. That's firm foundation where you understand I got this model and I'm giving it to the valley. I don't give to get, but I get to give. <laughs> Joyce, in other words, I get to have the privilege of having some money in my bank where I can give this girl $500 and not even look back. That's a privilege because I know where. I know where I come from. It was six of us in a two-bedroom apartment with two adults living. And my daddy had a sixth-grade education. But he was a giver. He was still picking people up, taking them to church. Yeah. 
It was eight of us in a van already, and we picked another six people up in the van on the church every Sunday for 10 years. Who does that? Somebody that has firm foundation. And we don't do it to be seen. I just want to teach you a principle that when you have firm foundation, you show others how this kingdom should look. And when if somebody else gets it, and somebody else gets it, y'all, we're building the kingdom on earth as it already is in heaven. And guess what we're ultimately doing? We're building something worth keeping. The doors of the church. Woo! Are always open. <laughs>